I looked at your blazer and I was like, this thing is beautiful. 44 rack, bro, 44 rack. <laughs> How is shopping for you now? It's nice, man. I lost all the weight. I lost 150 pounds. Little, I have a few critiques about being skinny, though. Like, Okay, talk to me. Uh, well, first of all, when you're skinny, the ankles are too tight. I don't want to do yoga to get out of my pants. That's why I miss <laughs> my fat boy pants. That's true. Because you could drop them and step out like a fireman. So it's little things, right. but for the most part, all good. All good. Has your wardrobe dramatically changed, though? Yeah, man. I get to shop at other stores now, which is nice, you know? I, I used to have to shop at the Big and Tall store my whole life. Now I can go into Macy's like Willy Wonka. I walk in there, it's like, come with me. Like, that fits, that fits, that fits. So it's, it's been a real gift, you know? Oh. On top of all the health stuff, that was the big thing. Uh, that You were dealing with type 2 diabetes. Gone now. Gone, right? man. No diabetes. Resting heartbeat went from 113 to 68. Walking around pretty healthy these days. Of course, there's always people online that, you know, when I was heavy, they're like, you're too heavy. And now it's like, are you sick? <laughs> Can I just walk to the earth, please? Can I just be happy? That's all just I'm happy. And, and you, and it seems like you're happy. You found this happy. Place. Yeah, man. You know, I think you got to find peace with yourself and at some point look in the mirror and go, you know, it's probably time to take care of you. Mm -hmm. And I didn't get that note early on. So, but I'm a big believer that when you get it, you get it. It doesn't matter when, as long as you get it, you know? Last time we talked, you were 212 pounds. Yeah. I'm fighting middleweight these days. I'm down to 212. How much are you now? I'm around 205. I float between 205 and 210, which that's is crazy. Magical. Just that's, crazy, right? That's like a, a third of you. <laughs> I mean, no, it really is. That's... My wife bumped her head on my, my shoulder the other day. She says, I kind of missed the big shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> What's the difference from, you know, your life before? I think it's just... Um, Self-care is important, and I think I finally got there. You know, I, my last vice I got left is I'm still smoking cigarettes, mm -hmm. but I'm working on that one. But my buddy of mine told me, you gotta knock them down in the order they're killing you. Mm. But the freedom of knowing that uh, I can move. And you know, I didn't wanna, I came from a humble beginning. I made my way to success, and I, you know, I have a child. And you know, as you hit 50, I'm 53 now, but mm -hmm. when you hit 50, you start doing that dad math, like, if I can live 25 more years, then he'll be 40, and that'll be, you know what I mean? So yeah. I want to be here for him, and, and I didn't want to go through everything I've gone through in my journey and be 60 and not be able to get out of a chair, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So it was time to make that change, and I'm really grateful I did, man. It's been the best. It's How has that been time. for your relationship as a father? Because that, that is great. something that's it's, incredible when you can move around. And, and to be an things. example, you know, I've been an example in a lot of good ways for my child, but I feel like I wasn't a good example of health for him, mm -hmm. and so I want him to see that it doesn't matter what age you are. If you are willing to do something a day at a time, you can change anything. And that's the message I wanted him to get. It doesn't matter what you want to change. It doesn't matter when you want to change it. All it takes is today. Just do today. If you can mm. do today, everything else will take care of itself. What does your day-to-day -day look like? Like your workout, your eating, how does that work? Is well, somebody bringing up a meal to you? My, my wonderful producers, uh, Christy Cecil and, and Robin, they, uh, they put, I asked them to put a weight bench and some of those adjustable weights in my giant trailer so that I can get a workout in here and there. And my diet is, you know, I eat like a French woman. I eat three bites, I put my, of my head in there and I light a cigarette, that's it. I just, I go small, but I, I eat very healthy now. I eat like all the people I used to make fun of. Mm. to be honest with you. But now, like, <laughs> the fat guy's still in me, so I eat vicariously. Like, if I see somebody where I'm like, get that gravy, you need to, come on, dig in there, man, you ain't. <laughs> do, do you ever miss, is there anything you miss? Um, like, certain foods you miss? You know, no. Because, man, I think I got my fill. I think I got my fill. And now I'm at the place where I can have a couple bites of something decadent if I want. I just, I just, I'm free and I don't ever want to go back. So it's not, it's not a, it's not an onus for me. Okay, so what advice do you have for folks out there that are going and starting this journey? Well, if, if, if you're trying to lose weight, a day at a time is the most important thing. I had gastric bypass surgery almost two, be two years in July, and I chickened out from doing it like twice. It took me five years to make that decision. And the only thing I would say is <clears throat> understand that the operation is not the, it's not the end, it's the beginning. Okay. Because <clears throat> what you have to commit to on the other side of it is what you need to look at. Because if you're not willing to commit to, you have to take vitamins every day, you have to get 75 ounces of water every day, you gotta get 30 grams of protein every day. If you're not willing to commit to that routine, don't do it. But if you're ready to commit to that on a daily basis, 
I mean, what stops proof's you? in the pudding. What stops you the other two times? The other two, well, the first time um, I went in there and when they, they give you the consultation for the surgery, you know those little cups you get with ketchup? Mm -hmm. They put that on the table and they said, that's what your stomach's gonna look like after the surgery, Mr. Gardell. And I ran out like Daffy Duck going through a wall. I was just like, <laughs> I couldn't even get my head around that. But as my knees started to hurt more, as my blood numbers started to get mm -hmm. worse and worse, you know, in this life, sometimes you have to surrender. And if you look up the textbook definition of surrender, it is concede to the winning side. So if you can turn that perspective dial 20 degrees, you can look at that like, you know what, I don't know how to do this, I need some help. And asking for help is the thing people are most terrified about, but is, it is the very thing where strength is born, in my opinion. When you, can, when you are strong enough to say, I can't do this on my own, mm -hmm. then the troops come up over the hill. Damn, and you really are on the winning side now. I also felt like his eyes were following me, like the Mona Lisa. Or those cat clocks. <laughs> All right, as we count down to this end of season four, what yes, can sir. you tell us? What are we gonna see? What's gonna happen? Because I know you two are trying to figure out how to spend time together. We're trying to get each other, because Rabishola is headed for medical school. Yep. Bob has just opened a manufacturing plant in his thing, and, and they're in that place of when couples work, and they're both working towards a goal, you can kind of sometimes grow apart, so you have yeah. to find that way to come back together. And I think uh, Gina and the gang have come up with a incredible final episode. It's really, it's got all the hearts and feels, and it's really funny, and it's got a good cliffhanger, and that's all the elements you want for a final. Well, I will just say there's another visit from my father, which was one of my favorite episodes I've mm -hmm. ever done on the show by, the, by Joel Murray, who's just yeah. incredible. How's it working with Gina? Because her comedy was always about yeah. Nigerian mm -hmm. culture, and now it's translated well to television. I think she has done something that has been amazing to watch. She, you know, I'm a stand-up comic, and mm -hmm. I, I ended up starring in a sitcom starring in another sitcom. Gina started with stand-up, which she's fantastic at, and then became a writer and an actress and an executive producer. I mean, that's an, that's an incredible thing to pull off. Ladies, please. We all agree this is Abishola's fault. How is Gina with the power now? now she, she's, nah, she's, <laughs> she's the same, man. You know, she'll, she'll tell you, again, don't ask unless you want to know. Mm -hmm. But she's straightforward, man, and she's always looking to make the show better. And, and that's what we need. And, and the most, thing, most important thing she adds into our writer's room is authenticity. That was fun, huh? Yes. You had a good time. <laughs> you what just happened? got renewed. How good. good is that? It's been an amazing run, man, to, to be uh, on a show that's going into its fifth season. You know, that's like catching a unicorn. And uh, I'm very, very grateful that we've been able to, to do this with this show. We found a nice audience. We keep getting a little bigger and a little bigger each year. And uh, I think we're putting out a good message. And I think people adhere to that. 6.9 million people. A Say it weeks again. 6.9 million yeah. people. Take that, all followers. We don't call you followers. Let we me... call you fans. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> and let me just say this to you. Yes, sir. When they proposed this show, I was yeah. like, wait a minute, a white businessman from the Midwest falls in love with a Nigerian immigrant. Right. I was like, as a comedy. Yeah. It, I mean, I was like, come on guys, does that make sense? You know, man, um, Chuck Lorre changed my life with Mike and Molly. Uh -huh. So when he called me about this one, it, it wouldn't have mattered. Like, I just trust that man to do what he does. Mm -hmm. And be, what him, Eddie Gordetsky, and Al Higgins, and Gina Yashere came up with, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it just sounded so interesting and it was such a departure from the last thing I did. Yeah. But it's the secret sauce is the same. It's all about love wins. Mm -hmm. It's all about love. You see, if you start there, you can go anywhere. And I mean, you get to blend cultures, which is can, yes. be, can be funny if you're open hearted. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, when you marry someone, you marry their family. And so you have to navigate that. And I like that we show that it doesn't matter what you look like. You say I do to somebody, you say I do to all of them. So you have the crazy uncle, you have the crazy sister-in-law, you have the, and, and we have that beautiful dynamic and learning how to navigate that I think makes for great comedy.